This 2000 Mustang GT looked very basic. If you were to walk up to this car parked like it is, you would think it was a very nice Mustang and that's about it. You would think it's a GT, you would say, hey, that's really cool. But honestly, it looked very ordinary. Ten years ago, I came across this car on Craigslist and I was talking with some friends. I had actually just recently made a new friend who had a 98 GT that was really nice. It was Rio red tinted clear coat. It looked like this. This wasn't his car, but it was a red GT like this. He had a lot of work done to it. It was really fast. And we got to talking about Mustangs. And I had just purchased my 2003 Azure Blue Mustang Mach 1. So I wasn't really in the market, but I kept thinking about this GT that I saw for sale. And the thing that was really interesting about it was it said it was Kenny Bell supercharged. And they were asking, I think, seven or 8,000. I think it was seven or eight thousand back then, and that was really good for the price back then. And the car was supposedly a good running car with a Kenny Bell on it, and I remember thinking how much fun that car would be and how fast that car would be. We would go to these car meets that were mostly import cars, and then our group of friends would show up with the domestic cars, the Mustangs, Camaros, Firebirds, all the tough cars. And I remember thinking how nice it would be to have that Kenny Bell GT in a time like this because there would be some pretty quick cars that would show up on the import side and you thought, you know, it would be nice to have something that would pack a little bit more punch, you know. But anyway, we got talking about this GT and we were talking about how much the New Edge Mustangs were so cool and they were still kind of pricey and uh, the car actually belonged to a guy's uncle who I worked with and I didn't know that at the time. But... It was weird to me that here in my little town there was a supercharged GT for sale and for a really good price. So I got talking with my friend about it on and off and I showed him the ad and we talked a little bit and next thing I know he showed up with the car. He went and bought it. I remember being very excited that he got the car but even more I was excited that he got it. He is a very smart person. He is very mechanical and he knows a lot about cars and at the time I remember thinking I'm glad he got it because I probably would have blown the car up by now if it was mine. And what I mean by that is he knew about air fuel ratios, he knew about how lean and rich to run the car, he knew all sorts of things about superchargers, and I thought, wow, if I ever get a supercharged Mustang, I want to be like him and I'm going to take my time and learn everything about it before I go out and race it around. And that was something very important to me, I remember thinking that at the time. And so it was really cool to see this Kenny Bell Supercharger in this Mustang for the first time. I hadn't really seen a Kenny Bell Supercharger besides on YouTube and things. But this car didn't only have a Kenny Bell, it actually had an MMR 600 built bottom end with forged pistons and rods and it was able to handle the power. The reason it had that MMR engine is because the previous owner had thrown a rod through the block of the original engine. And so the car was built up now, it was really tough and it had the Kenny Bell on it. It was an amazing price after all the money that the previous owner had put into it and then sold the car for. I'm sure he was still losing money on it. And so we got together often. Almost every weekend we'd be out cruising around in our cars. You can see a lot of really neat cars here. Obviously I took this picture and in the foreground is my competition orange Terminator. On the left there you've got my buddy's Red Mach 1. I did a story about that car earlier. You can see his Kenny Bell GT there in the middle, Danny Johnson's Screaming Yellow Terminator, my buddy's Trans Am, you know, lots of cool cars, Z06. And we would just have a blast going out and having fun, cruising the back roads, lining up a little bit, racing, you know, it always went down like that. And then we would go to the meet. They called it the rollout. Here is the rollout. You can see all the domestic cars in the foreground, and in the background you can see the import cars. This would take place in our local In-N-Out parking lot and all the cars would meet there on Friday night and races would get lined up and it was just something that um, it was inevitable. You'd go show up and your heart would always pound a little bit as you showed up and you went and parked by all your friends and all the other cars were there. It was a pretty good car get together but honestly the import guys had a chip on their shoulder. They didn't like the muscle cars probably because they knew that for the most part we were faster and that we sounded better and all that stuff that's my opinion but anyway we would go to these meets and you know people would start talking and somebody would show up with something that was done up pretty good and there were two guys that showed up with a red honda s2000 
Now these guys worked for a performance diesel shop and they had a lot of experience. They would take turbos off of these trucks and put them on cars and tune them and run them on the dyno and stuff. And they had this really nice red S2000. It looked like the one in this picture here. Beautiful car and they opened the hood and it had a turbo under it. And I remember thinking, wow, that thing's probably pretty fast and these guys know what they're doing. And of course, one thing led to another and next thing we knew, my buddy was going to race his Kenny Bell GT against the S2000. So we went out and lined him up and we watched the race and it was actually very close, but the S2000 did edge out the GT, just barely. And maybe he had half a car on him and uh, we were all pretty upset, but I remember thinking, I was telling my buddy, you need to get gears in that GT. He still had the stock 327s. I had 373s in my bullet. And I said, you need to put some 373s in that GT. It would totally make up all the difference. And so the next day, we settled it. We decided to do something really crazy. Now, one of the first stories I've done on this channel was about this Red Fire Mustang GT on the right. And so this picture may look familiar. I had just purchased this GT from my friend because it was totaled. And right before it got totaled, my friend had installed 410 gears in the axle. And his brother had helped him do it. His brother just graduated from becoming an auto tech. And so I was going to part the car out, but I ended up saving it. So that's another story. It's actually one of my first stories. You can watch that later. I'll put the link in the description. And so we decided, let's take your stock 327 axle out of your silver Kenny Bell GT, put it in the Red Fire GT, and then we'll take the axle out of my bullet that has the 373s and axle shafts. I had just built that axle, spent a lot of money on it, but I wanted the 410s, so we said, let's take the 373 axle out of the bullet, put it in the Kenny Bell car, because that would be better for the Kenny Bell. The 410s would be a little too much, and then we'll put the 410 axle from the Red Fire GT into the bullet. So we're going to do a three-way axle swap in one night and we're going to get ready and go and race that S2000 again the next day. And I gotta say real quick, this guy in the picture, this was my neighbor John. Really nice guy, Vietnam veteran. He was a tough guy. He was always telling me I did everything wrong. He'd lean over my wall and tell me when I was pulling the engine out of my car that I was doing it wrong. He was always um, a tough guy but he was very helpful and he always meant well so I gotta give a shout out to him he did help a lot we did this in his driveway next door because we had extra tools over there and a couple more floor jacks and everything so I got a shout out to him but anyway we did this three-way axle swap and then we got the cars lined up for a race the next night so here's the race watch that again real quick. I'll tell you what's going on in case you can't see it. The Kenny Bell is in the far lane and you can see he's right ahead right there. He's got about a car length on him and he continued to pull a little bit at the end. That was a really awesome race and man did it sound good. And so as you can guess Word got around that this was a very fast car. Everybody in town was talking about it. Every time we go to that meet, everybody was talking about it. And nobody wanted to race them anymore. Um, sometimes you get people who thought they were really fast, and they'd line up, and they'd lose. <laughs> you know, it was really fun. And, of course, we couldn't help but make some little meme videos about all this. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty funny. So anyway, we went to the racetrack. Here we are in the staging lanes. We got there early. There's that Kenny Bell MMR 600 engine. And this is his car sitting here in the staging lanes. And it was a real fun trip. We would drive all down to the racetrack in a big pack. It's about two hours away to Vegas for us. This is the Red Fire GT right before it got totaled. It was a really nice car, 80,000 miles on it back then. And then here we have the blue Mach 1. This is actually my friend's Mach 1, and I'll be doing a story about this car soon. But he went down to the races with us. You know, he lived about an hour away, so we didn't see him very much. There's my bullet, naturally aspirated 373s, um, headers. That's all it had. I was running 13.9s. I had the Vegas track, which is actually pretty good. So 
Uh, my buddy's white 5.0. It's a 95 Mustang GT, and it's a 347 stroker now. Here's Danny Johnson's Torch Red Mach 1. As you can see, we're all the first ones there, so it's going to be really fun. We're all racing each other on the first round. But, um, you know, it races when it gets dark. It's, you know, sun's starting to go down now. Um, and then my buddy's Red Mach 1, I've done a story about this car as well. So we were all here at the races, and there was something very special. Uh, we were all lined up, and the new ZL1 Camaro showed up. Big, tough guy in a ZL1, and, you know, really expensive car. One of my friends actually ended up getting one just like it later. But he shows up, and, of course, who gets lined up next to him other than my buddy's Kenny Bell GT. And so this video I put on YouTube and it's really famous. He was only getting one wheel on that at the end. Is that clean? Is yeah, that's clean. Helmet. Yeah, if he's in the 13s, you have to have a helmet. And so if you watch this video again, you'll see he's only getting one tire to smoke there. The diff was slipping. This was actually right before we swapped axles. So he still had the 327 gear ratio in there. And if you watch the race, they both leave about the same time. The Camaro doesn't seem like it spins very much. They both get a pretty good launch and they both hook and go. And if you pay real close attention, you'll notice that the the GT actually trapped at 115 miles an hour, which is a really good trap speed for the quarter mile. He could have been in the 11s. And here, the ZL1 oh, trapped at 111. So anyway, really good race, and you know a lot of people don't like seeing that. Here's us coming back from the racetrack at night, and just a ton of fun night meets with our cars every weekend. And you're going to see as this video goes on a lot of maintenance and modifications that go on with this car. This is the time that the Kenny Bell was taken off. He thought he had some bearing noise issue. And so it was the first time that I actually got to help install a supercharger. It was really fun. And of course, like I said, he seemed to know what he was doing. He took off the supercharger, had it sent out, shipped back, rebuilt by Kenny Bell, and reinstalled it. And these were very fun times for me. I was just getting to modify cars and my bullet would later end up with a supercharger on it and everything and these two cars would actually become very similar. My bullet would end up with an MMR 600 engine just like his car. They'd both be supercharged, you know, tons of very similar modifications, same cams, everything. And so it's really hard to tell the story without talking a lot about my bullet because our two GTs became known as some of the fastest cars in town and people were scared of these cars. Here's a little footage of my bullet. So these two GTs would be partners in crime. And so doing research, he realized that it would be better for his car if he had a 0304 Cobra Terminator fuel tank. You may wonder why that's such a big deal, but the real reason is because the tank is sumped, which means it goes kind of in a V shape inside where the fuel can go into one little box where the pumps sit down in the middle. And so it makes it so that your pumps are always sitting in fuel and you don't dry suck air when you're under boost. And so these Terminator tanks are like 600 bucks each if you can get one off a wrecked car. And so he went and bought the Terminator tank. And so guess what I did to the bullet when I supercharged it? I went on and I found a Terminator tank for mine as well and bought it. It's like my bullet was following the footsteps of this GT and it was a really fast car. Unfortunately, one night he was racing my friend's Electron Blue Z06. You may have seen it in one of the pictures there. And I think he had some pre-detonation and he melted a piston. It was really unfortunate. And so 
here the beautiful built engine was down and the Kenny Bell car was down and who is he but a superhero in the car world to say we're gonna pull this engine out and we're gonna fix it and in the meantime what he did was he pulled out the engine and he and I started talking and this is where it gets really interesting he really didn't have a lot of money to buy all the parts and put it back together at the time and we got talking back and forth and I said you know what I bought a true blue GT it's an 02 and he knew about the car but this is the story so you guys understand I had gone to California and picked up this beautiful blue GT that had a blown head gasket and see my bullet here in the foreground it was the same color the reason I bought the car was to swap all the body panels over onto my bullet because the bullet wasn't in as good a shape as the GT so I was looking for a car that was the same color true blue that I could get all the nice straight panels off swap them onto my bullet save having to pay for a paint job everything and so this is my bullet missing all of its panels during the swap and so I traded all the panels and here's how nice the bullet looks now with all the panels from that GT and so I started to go about fixing the GT. I took off the cylinder heads and I was looking at how the condition was on them to see if they were warped or anything. And at this point I saw there was coolant in the cylinders from the head gasket being blown and I just thought, you know, it'd be a lot better, even though I'd already bought a head bolt kit and everything, head gasket kit from Ford, I decided it would be a better idea if I just got another engine for that car. Actually, this is a video of the oil pan when I took it off of that engine. No wonder why this old engine was toast. Look at the oil in that pan. It's like cake batter. Blown head gasket. So at that point I decided just to replace the whole engine in that car with a whole nother one. So I did. And this is a whole nother story and it was one of my first stories and I'll put the link to this story in the description too. But basically what I decided was I was going to pull that engine out and have it for parts. So where this all plays into the story here is I took the bottom end of that engine and had it on an engine stand with trash bags over it in my backyard and it had been sitting there for a few months like that it had rained on it water had still gotten in the cylinders looked all rusted out so this is actually what the cylinders look like and they I'm sure some people tell you it wasn't so bad but uh, what we decided was since his car was broken he didn't have a lot of money at the time why don't you just take this short block at the rotating assembly with the pistons the block the rods all that uh, it's, it's still rotated everything take it and clean it up and put it in the car for the meantime. So he poured fresh oil in it, he rotated the crank, he got it all lubricated, he put his cylinder heads on it, everything, put it all back together with the supercharger on it, and it ran really good. Here it is against my cousin's bullet. So the fun was back on. We would put our slicks on, our drag radials, we'd go out and race a bunch. We'd go up to a really cool event they had with racing and it was at the old airport. They had shut it down but they still let us race there for a little while. They put an end to that but while we were up there here's some footage and video of my bullet and his car at the races. He was running E85 and nitrous through this stock bottom end with the Kenny Bell and the car was a monster. It sounded great. SLP exhaust. No, I got my I got my truck here with all their, you know, tires and everything, jacks, tools.
ideas against my bullet and at the time the bullet was not supercharged but later these cars ran identical trap speeds and quarter mile times. This is a good comparison to show you what nitrous and a supercharger on a two valve will do. So he trapped 120 and I trapped 102. So then we were all sad to hear that he was going to take a job in a different state and he did. This picture was taken the last night that we cruised together with the two Mustangs and he left but then we were all excited when about a year later he came back and the fun was back on. So then it was back to cruising and having fun with our muscle car friends. Of course the modifications kept coming just like they did for everybody but more particularly for him and this is actually his rebuilt T45 that he sent to T45 source because he broke third gear on a hard shift. It just shows how much power was getting put through there. He broke the input shaft too. And, and the next part of the story is very interesting. If you saw my video about the Terminator Cobra that was found in pieces in a storage unit where the guy cut it all up with a sawzall and threw the rest of the car away but kept the good parts, well, my friend was the one who was contacted by the old guy who was cleaning out the storage unit and my friend bought all those body panels for the Terminator. He sold the trunk lid and spoiler, he sold the hood, but he did keep the side mirrors, the side skirts, the side scoops, and the Terminator seats for his car. Of course, it was a convertible in that story, so the rear seats weren't there, but that was, that was fine. He had beautiful black leather seats anyway. So that was a whole nother story that I did, and these are the parts that made it on his car. So here are some pictures of the nitrous bottle in the trunk, and the battery relocated into the trunk, and a strut tower on the back, and he had a really nice mat in the back that said GT, you can't really see it in that picture. He did the coolant tank there by the battery, obviously had it relocated. He made these custom brackets under the bumper, and then always tearing the car apart, changing things out, coil on plugs. There's a nice shot of the interior with the fire extinguisher and the shift knob and everything. You can see the nitrous buttons and activation switches, everything right there. But beautiful car inside. The interior was in great shape. The car had like 160,000 miles on it, but it was still beautiful paint. And actually the bumpers were the only thing that were a little scuffed up. And I found these bumpers on Craigslist that somebody had taken off to put Celine bumpers on. And so he had bought those and put them on and they matched really nice and so the car really came together. The paint was nice, the body was nice, the interior was nice, no rust or anything. He smoked out the headlights, um, he added the 35th anniversary bezel for the gauges. Even though it was a 2000 and not a 99, he still liked that 35th anniversary bezel. And he had some blue LED lights, kind of hard to see in that picture, but he added blue LED interior lights. You know, normal maintenance like new spindles. He went through and painted the gas tank straps blue, the sway bar blue, he did the brakes blue. He also did get the Cobra brakes off of that Cobra that was in the storage unit. So the rear brakes are the same, but you can see there's the front Cobra calipers. And this is just kind of all the blue accents that he did, and that's actually the axle off my bullet. And so it has the 373 gears, carbon fiber, clutches in the diff, the uh, new bearings, Alloy USA axle shafts, and Alloy USA lug nut studs. And so then he did the Mach 1 chin spoiler, which looks pretty good. He took the horse off and had it painted, kind of a flame horse looking thing on it. Looks pretty good too. And the next thing he did that was really interesting was he went down to Las Vegas for a street race. and. If you've seen my other videos, you know I talk about these street racing spots in Vegas. Iconic Terminator Cobras that have raced there and everything. Well, this GT went down there and it battled with the big boys. Now, on this specific race, he was still on the stock bottom end out of that O2 GT. He had nitrous and E85. But let's remember, he was racing a full interior street car. And these were gutted out Hondas with huge turbos on them. And so... The odds were against him, even though he did really well. So here you can see this uh, basically gutted out race car against his really fast street car, although they called it a 5.0. His car wasn't a 5.0.
can see he actually kept up pretty well, but the problem he had was his nitrous solenoid got stuck open, and so the car fell on its face right about here, and the turbo car pulled ahead. Now, I'm not saying that that turbo Civic wouldn't have won the race completely because those are really fast cars and they really gain at the end and he was keeping up but it was a little bit above his league and that's okay and so back in town having fun you know going out putting street prep down he had some friends he worked with with some cool GTs as well and they were in our car club here too and it was just a lot of fun. He got a, a Focus ST, and he enjoyed that car for a little while too, but the Mustang was always the cool one. Now, uh, that bottom end in that GT lasted for a little while. Um, he had, it went for about two years, and then he finally threw a rod through the side of it. So it was time for the Kenny Bell to come off. It was time for the engine to get rebuilt again. And this time he was going to do a lot more with the car. And he really wanted to make it fast. And this is right when I was supercharging my bullet. And I thought that this was the coolest thing ever to have a supercharged Mustang. Now, I had made a video with him, a walk around video. I shot the whole thing. I put some music to it. It's a really good video. And he has it on his YouTube channel. So I'm going to put a link to it because he goes around and tells everything that this car had done to it. And this is when it was supercharged and when it was built up like this. But basically, um, that walk around video I think was when the car was in its absolute best state. I really liked it and he had the nitrous on and I'll admit I was scared to ride in that car. So here's my favorite pull with that car leaving. You can see how much of a monster this is. After two years of about 700 horse being put through that stock bottom end, it finally threw a rod through the side of the block. And now he decided it was time to rebuild. He started gathering parts. He actually had a friend who had this engine that was built but had a problem with it. And he took it and worked on it and fixed it up a little bit. You can see the MMR oil pan here. That's the deep 9 quart one. I had the same one on the bullet. So he bought some cams for the heads and he actually took the valves and had them filed down. For some reason they had some PTV piston to valve clearance. But you can see the head studs there instead of head bolts and he was building it really strong to take care of everything. He has a dial indicator on there. You know he was doing everything right. He was very good at that. Here's a degree wheel to degree the cams in. I know that can be quite complicated. But the biggest thing he was doing for change was a turbo. So he went to put a turbocharger on the car instead of the Kenny Bell supercharger. Now, of course, this is going to net more power. And, you know, he's had to do a lot of things with this. He even changed the gear ratio back to the stock 327s because the 373s were just too short and he couldn't build boost. So here's the Kenny Bell kit all packaged up. He sold it and bought the turbo and he put that all together on the car. And so I'm gonna read off the mod list real quick of everything the car has done to it at this point since this is the way it was when this mod list was written. It had Boost King bearings, Manly 0304 Cobra rods, ARP head studs, ARP side main bolts, ARP rod bolts, ARP cam gear bolts, balanced rotating assembly, it ran extremely smooth with less than 2% difference in the compression from all the cylinders. has a big oil filter with a remounting uh, bracket and an easy to get to spot. It had the 7 quart MMR oil pan which holds 10 quarts. That's usually what we would put in it. Stage 2 MMR heads ported and polished with stainless steel valves. Stage 3 comp cams XE270AH and that's what I had in the bullet as well and it sounded really good at idle. Full custom turbo kit with 76 millimeter turbo with turbo headers, full exhaust, heat wrap, Hellion intercooler, turbo smart boost controller, three inch black custom cold side piping, blow through mass air, 
Sump Cobra tank, we talked about that fuel tank, with twin pumps, upgraded FPDM, wiring upgraded for the fuel pumps, 60 pound injectors, nitrous outlet wet nitrous kit, which he said you could spray a 75 shot on it as long as it's on race gas and under 13 pounds boost. It had the rare Richard Racing intake manifold, stage 3, 11, and quote clutch and billet aluminum flywheel, TR3650 transmission, and he talked about how he had it re-geared for the turbo with the 327s, so it'll do 150 in fourth gear and still have plenty in fifth with that gear ratio. It had the upgraded carbon clutches and limited slip, which I talked about came out of my bullet. Upgraded axles out of my bullet. And as far as the exterior mods go, like we talked about, the side skirts from the Cobra, the mirrors, the brakes, the factory spoiler, he had moved it back one inch. That's a common mod on the 99 and 2000 GTs or, or V6 that had that kind of spoiler. You could actually move it back an inch and it looked a little bit better. Chin spoiler, grill delete, welded subframe connectors, all new ball joints, tie rods, brake pads, bushings, box Steeda aluminum upper and control arms. I mean, the, the car had everything. It had um, the new drive shaft with upgraded U-joints, and the interior, we talked about the Cobra seats, the bullet pedals, we didn't talk about that, billet and tilt lever, you know, boost and air fuel gauges. All those gauges cost a lot of money too, I'll tell you. And he had the handheld SCT programmer too. So next, he got the car running, everything seemed to be pretty good, and he was going to take it up for a dyno tune. So here's some footage of the car running with the turbo. It's not crazy because he's just driving it around. was funny he put his bumper in his bedroom because he didn't want it to get hurt when he was working on the car but anyway all that work getting it all plumbed up and ready back together and this is all garage built and like I said he did phenomenal work he was really good at what he did and he did everything so clean everything was so nice and even cleaning the car he cleaned it up real nice and it was always shiny and nice and he took really good care of it and it always looked good so he added a two-step and he cut a hole in the front bumper for the front X exhaust for the turbo and everything and then he got it on a trailer and he got it dyno tuned and it put down over 700 I believe So we had some fun with the car. I'll tell you what, I was scared to ride in it even more than I was before. It was really fast and powerful all over the place with slicks on the street. And he even had a really close race with a GTR that Danny Johnson had converted to E85. It was one of our friend's cars. Very close race, very neat car. So he was up against a lot of fast cars. But then he did something that I didn't see coming. He went out and bought a brand new 2016 Camaro SS, automatic. And yes, it was a very fast car. As a matter of fact, I raced it with my bullet and beat him by like half a car length. It was just right there. And those cars are really fast right out of the box. But that means that the Mustang went for sale. So it was really sad to see that happen. You know, he did a couple more cosmetic things like the valence on the bottom. But basically, he put the car for sale. And my friend actually ended up buying the car. And my friend did some things with it. I had told him the car's dyno tuned, do not change anything on it, just drive it the way it is, but he wanted to keep turning up the boost, and uh, my friend told him, hey, keep high octane fuel in it, it's not really meant to be driven with pump gas unless it's on the pump gas tune or whatever, and, and so the new owner friend came to me one day and said, hey, it's blowing smoke really bad out of the, f the exhaust, out of the front bumper exhaust, uh, you want to come drive it and see what's wrong with it? And I, I drove it around and it felt fine. I didn't really think anything was wrong with it, but when you get into it, it was really burning oil. It was shooting it out pretty bad. 
Now, we took it to Danny Johnson's and Danny did a compression test and it had So here's a good cylinder. That had a number 20, but number 6 came back with hardly any PSI. And according to that test, that's what happened. Now, my friend said that he sold it to another friend who took it to a shop and was saying, oh, well, it's got, you know, really loose rings because it's a nitrous car and all this stuff, and it was built for boost, and so it's okay to have low compression. But I'm like, no, I don't think it's supposed to have that low a compression. So there's a chance the engine's still good. Supposedly the new owner had it retuned because it wasn't running uh, in the right air-fuel ratio, which I would say was because of the dead cylinder. But anyway, he said he had it retuned and it drives around fine, so I don't really know. Um, if the car has a dead cylinder or not, um, technically I would say it probably does. There's a chance that it wasn't threaded in all the way right and it was losing compression through the gauge. I don't know, but that's just what I say. I'd probably do another compression test on it and see what the story is. But anyway, that's the story of this 2000 GT. Right now it's owned by someone who is a friend of a friend, and so I still know its whereabouts, but it's definitely a really cool car. Uh, it was a huge car in this town. A lot of people were scared of it. A lot of people knew that it was fierce, and it was fun to build these cars together, and it's something I'm always going to remember. So I just wanted to share this story. Of course, I couldn't put it all into words. This is years and years of fun and experience all together. And I just wanted to close with this little picture because this reminds me of how our friendships were in this car club at the time. It says that the best friends to have are those who want nothing from you but your company. I just really like this picture when I saw it and it just reminded me of a bunch of friends hanging out working on cars. And so that's definitely what this story was. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. This is one of my longest videos I've made, but it's definitely a good story. Remember to subscribe to the channel and see more of these stories if you're not already on here with us. And stay tuned for more of these Mustang stories.